Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code session. Today we've been working on a content migration from the Western Friend website, which is built in Drupal, over to a version, a new version of the Wagtail, a website built in Wagtail that we've been working on for a couple years now. <laughs> Slow and steady though. So the one of the last big steps is migrating content and after that we're going to hopefully not be adding any of uh, the significant features and we'll be down to fine-tuning uh, the look and feel and usability of the site. But in case in order to get a good feel of uh, how the site works as it stands we need some content and so let's use the content from the original website. When things are done the importer has succeeded, we'll have the content in the Wagtail interface. And I'm carrying over metadata from the Drupal site. There are essentially two taxonomies, Drupal taxonomies, that we've been using to keep track of authors. Um, there's two types of content that people can author in the, in the website. There's magazine content, articles, magazine articles specifically, and there's a multimedia library. It has videos and PDFs and other things that don't quite make it into the magazine article, uh, magazine itself, but are still noteworthy and as such are included in the site. Those article uh, authors, magazine or the library item authors, that is, need to be kind of merged into the same, into a common bucket, which we're now calling contacts. So we're kind of uh, cleaning up some data a little bit and getting things a little bit more organized. Let's take a look at the code that I wrote today to import library item authors into this common authors or contacts bucket as we're calling it now, which can consist of people, meetings, and organizations. In order to import these um, data, we're writing Drupal management or Django management commands. Basically, a command uh, is a Python script that in imports or inherits from base command, and it register, registers itself. Basically, the file name becomes the command that you can run in the terminal. So you can see I'm running manage.py import library item authors, pointing it to a file. I've already done that, but I'll just go ahead and show you in any case. What it essentially does is it opens a CSV file that we've exported from the Drupal website and parses each of those rows in the CSV and imports them into the, the correct location within our contacts um, app. So in order to tell it the command line argument, you just add an argument here. You tell it the argument name and what to do with it, what type of data it is. Then you write uh, a handler method. And this is where everything happens basically. In our handlers, and specifically this one, we are going to open that file and parse it to a list of dictionaries. Then we're going to iterate over those. And we get this nice progress bar here from this Python module called TQDM. And it just takes an iterable and gives you the progress. And then from here, we're checking the the library item author ID, library author ID, sorry if I'm stumbling on my words a little bit, this session's been a little bit long. Uh, then we're checking the type, there are th those three types of authors that we can have, or three types of contacts, meetings, organizations, and people. And they have their own conditions, basically. Um, the raw data looks like this, and there are some columns here. And if the Entity is an organization, it'll have a value in the organization column. If it's a meeting, it'll have a value in the meeting column. Otherwise, it's going to be a person. It'll have a given name and family name. But these are all mutually exclusive. We've worked to ensure that. So I can kind of rely on those in my logic. So a person is neither a meeting nor an organization. So there's only three cases for those rows. And the other thing is we are wanting to dedupe our data as well. We uh, realize that they're through the lifetime lifespan of the Drupal website there have been some duplicate entries so we just went through Mary actually went through and just earmarked the ones that were duplicates of and which um, row they were duplicate of 
Uh, so in the case of the error duplicate, we don't want to do anything. We're not, we're not going to import duplicates. We're going to handle those in another round when I actually import the library items and the articles, magazine articles. In any case, for each of those three conditions, uh, we're going to handle that. We have a handler function. And I had to do this with three separate functions because there's enough nuance to these um, that it, I just couldn't figure out a way to have one kind of unified function. There may be a way of doing that. Um, but I'm not really striving for elegance here. I'm giving myself enough hints and understanding along the way to uh, get this import done, but it's not going to be something we'll maintain in the long run. It's something that will get us across the gap. And once the site is up and running for a while, we'll probably remove the importer code. Uh, in the case, uh, there's, I just wanted to catch all that we couldn't find. It didn't meet one of these criteria or whatever. I just wanted to let myself know that. Let's look at these handler functions. They basically do the same thing. So I'll go over one of them in depth and um, skim over the others. But for each one of them, in the case of a person, there's a little more going on here because it's got to handle the corrected. And actually, I can simplify now that I think of it. There's, uh, the data structure of changes. If I look at the library and monsters, we're only relying on. Uh, given in family name anymore we're correcting them in place so essentially that's simple i'm just grabbing these out as python variables we're looking for these entity id fields and we're going to use them as a condition in these conditional checks. So first we're going to see if I've already imported this library item author. I want to be able to rerun these importers and have it just work. So we're just looking for if one exists. If it exists, we're actually just going to pass over it. The other case is, remember these are coming from two separate taxonomies. So I have another importer script that imports all of our magazine authors, There's like 2,000 of those. And in many cases, or yeah, I think many of the library item authors had also contributed magazine articles. So there was some overlap and we wanted to unify those. We're unifying those in the same collection. So we wanted to indicate when somebody has been both a library item author and a magazine author that this is the same person. So Mary painstakingly went through all, I think it's about 200 rows in this library item author spreadsheet and just noted down the ones that were magazine authors as well, which I think the majority of them were associated, had to do this. There's the machine, you know, we couldn't program a Python script to do that. You just have to have knowledge of uh, the magazine, and that's Mary's job. So she did so with high degree of accuracy as well. I only found like one error in the whole thing. Most of this stumbling that I did during today's live code session was just my own mental fatigue and not paying attention to details. So in the case we do have a Drupal author ID, we're just going to get that person. I'm doing a little bit of exception handling here to give myself a hint of what's going wrong. I was having, there's cases where either, yeah, I wasn't able to find it. Then we're going to just take that magazine author and we're going to tag it with his library item author ID as well. So we'll know that this person is the same person and we'll have those uh, in the record, and uh, I don't think we have an oh, example here, maybe under organizations. Oh, I, well, it's the kind of people. There will be some cases here under people where they've been in both collections here. Yep. And that's it, we just saved that person. So that was an existing author. These are the existing library author, item authors, but we'll pass over them. And then the final case is just we're going to create one. And at this point, we know it's just a library item author and not a magazine author. So we just Create it with a given name and family name, and uh, a little bit of exception handling here. I think from a previous session where I was having some troubles with um, one of the fields. I'm not sure why, but I haven't had any problems. With that. This exception handling could probably go away. The other interesting thing to note is that Wagtail is a hierarchical content model, the Wagtail page model. So at the very start of this function, I should have mentioned this. We're grabbing an index page, and this represents the root in which we'll put a person, a record of a person. We also have index pages for meetings and organizations. 
you can think of those as kind of like manila folders or branches of a tree because it is a tree structure and you have to every page has to have a parent and all the way to the root and so we took that index page and added a child instance uh, with this person and saved it in the case you know the catch-all case where we didn't have a person so this function it's a little over like 30 lines 30 or 40 lines we essentially repeated it where we're trying to avoid the duplicates the only differences with the other organization meeting content types they're simpler the structure it just has a title instead of a given and family name but we do the exact same thing if there's an author by that name we look it up and then tag it with the library item author id giving myself a hint if something went wrong passing over the existing and adding a new in the third case that's essentially it in a nutshell how we are and i'm going to I'm using this import anymore, so I'll delete that. I, and I'm not adding command errors. That is how you write management commands in Django. And an example of writing a migration command using CSV data exported from an existing content management system of any type, doesn't matter, or any kind of CSV data you can get uh, from any uh, origin, any source, and how to get it into basically Django none of this is too specific to wagtail aside from adding it to the page tree all right well this has been another live code session on code buddies community if you're interested in getting involved with open source projects or learning to code or helping other people along their learning journey stop by codebuddies.org there's a lot of groups here on code buddies uh, who are interested in various topics mostly relating to programming software development, but I think there's even some groups relating to, like the game, uh, well, let's see, no, that's the language, go math, maybe some philosophy or teaching how to code, things like that. CodeBuddies is a really uh, active community, and the CodeBuddies platform is also open source. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time watching this recap, and have a great day.